G'day guys, um, today we're doing some statistics, we're doing a bit of probability. We've got a triangular distribution with a minimum value of 1, a maximum value of 9 and a peak value of 6 and we're asked to find the probability of X, the random variable x falling between this interval here. So what I've done is I've quickly drawn up a triangular distribution type um, function and we're going to sub in the values that we know. So it has a minimum value of 1, a maximum value of 9, and a peak value of 6. So this here is 6. Perfect. And we're asked to find this probability distribution here. So first of all, we have to figure out what the um, the peak value of this triangle distribution is. Um, so because it's a probability distribution, we know the area under this triangle has to equal 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of geometry, and we're going to say the area of this triangle has to be equal to 1 which is equal to half the base, which is 9 take 1, times the height. So therefore, 1 is equal to 9 take 1 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. So the height of this triangle is going to be equal to a quarter. Great. Perfect. So now let's, um, for our own benefit, let's draw in the domain that we've been asked. So it's approximately, these all have to be just approximate. It's not really that important that you get them right, like exactly right. It's just for your own sort of benefit in understanding what we're trying to do. So that's going to be our 6.5 lower bound, and our 8, let's just put it about here somewhere. So basically, because the probability of a certain event or a certain domain occurring on any of these distributions is equal to the area that is um, under the curve between the um, endpoints of the domain. So basically, what we're looking for is we're looking for the area of this part of our distribution here. Cool. So, there are two ways that we're going to go about figuring out this area, both of which start at the same sort of beginning, like um, we have to work out what the uh, function is on these two parts of the domain, before and after the peak. One of them we're going to then work out what the area of this is geometrically, and the other one we're going to use integration to figure out the area of the area to figure out the area under the curve, sorry. So we're going to show that they're both equal to the same thing, so it doesn't really matter what you use to solve this. Okay, so what we need to then now do is we need to come up with a function that will define this probability distribution from the point x equals 6 to x equals 9. So well, first of all, it's a linear function pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to find the gradient of it. So m is equal to y2 take y1. I'm doing this quite a long-winded way, like I'm making sure I show all my steps, but in an exam I don't think it would be 100% necessary to show all these. So y2 is 0, subtract y1, 1 quarter, divided by x2, 9 take 6. So our gradient is going to be negative a quarter over 3, which is the same as saying negative 1 on 12. Cool. So we then have that. We then can sub it into our sort of relation. We've got y equals negative x over 12 plus c. So we're going to substitute in a value for, to find c. So we're going to substitute in 9, 0. 
So we'll go 0 equals x is 9, so it'll be negative 9 over 12 plus c. So naturally, c is going to have to be equal to 9 over 12. So from this, we can see that the function that defines the distribution from 6 to 9 is going to be y equals negative x on 12 plus 3 over 4 or 9 over 12. Cool. So, the first way we're going to go about solving this is geometrically. So, the way we're going to do that is we're going to find out what the function is at both 6.5 and 8. And as you can see, we've got two triangles here. We've got one which is includes the uh, shaded area plus this bit. And we've got one that is in just this bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out the area of the large triangle and we're going to subtract the area of the small triangle. So, first of all we have to figure out the function at six and a half. So f of 6.5 is equal to 5 over 24. and that's me substituting 6.5 into this equation. We have to also work at f of 8. And that's going to be equal to 1 over 12. Cool. So what we can then do is we're going to say the area of the shaded region is equal to the area of the big triangle, subtract the area of the small triangle, which is equal to the area of the big triangle is going to be a half base times height, so it's going to be a half. The base is 9 take 6.5 and the height is the function at 6.5 or 5 over 24. And from that, we're going to subtract the area of the small one, which is, again, half base times height, a half. The base is 9 take 8. And the height is on this one. The function at 8 is 1 over 12. Cool. And from that, we get the probability... of the dis random variable distributed between six and a half and eight equaling seven over thirty two. Cool. All right, so let's just separate these. Okay, so that there was solving it. We this was geometric. And now we're going to use calculus. So what we could say is to figure out the area of the shaded region here. We could just use the area of the shaded region is going to be equal to the integral from 6.5 to 8 of f of x dx. 
which is equal to the integral from 6.5 to 8 of this function. Negative x and 12 plus 3 quarters dx. Okay, so now that we have this, if this isn't what there are two ways that this question could be asked. If it was asked in a non calculator section of an exam, it'd be worth a hell of a lot more marks than it would be worth in a calculator section because from here you could any calculator with graphing um, capabilities would be able just to pump out a number for you here. We're going to try it, well, we're going to do it by hand. So this is going to equal the, um, we're going to evaluate this integral, we're going to take the integral of this, and that's going to be negative x squared divided by 24. I'm assuming you know how these integrals work. And then we have 3x over 4 evaluated between 6.5 and 8. So, what finally this will come out to be is 8 squared, so it's going to be negative 64 divided by 24 plus 3 times 8, which is 24 over 4. And from that, I'm going to subtract it, evaluate it 6.5, 6.5 squared, um, and then we're going to take, divide that by 24 is equal to negative, so 169 over 96 plus 6.5 times 3 divided by 4 is going to be 39 over 8. Now, if we uh, compute this, we will end up with also an area under the curve of 7 over 32, which you can see is exactly the same as the one we found geometrically. So this one here, we used calculus. So, you can see that there are two methods of working out what the uh, area under this particular triangular distribution is. What we need to understand is, in an exam, you may get specifically asked to solve this area using one of the two. So, it's not like you can become a jet at the geometric version and completely leave this behind. Exams will probably ask you especially if you're in a higher level of maths, to do it one or the other way. So you'll have to be fluent in both ways to make sure that you get full marks. Now, so just a little recap is, we first of all, when we have a triangular distribution, we have to go about finding what the maximum height of our triangle is, i.e. this point here. Once we've done that, we can then find the functions which define the triangular distribution over the domain. Once we've done that, if we're going to do it geometrically, we're going to find um, a couple of triangles and we're going to minus the big triangle from the small triangle, depending on what your domain looks like in terms of the distribution itself. Using the integral method, we only have to just find the two endpoints and integrate them with respect to the function. Now, if you if the calculus doesn't scare you, this is usually the foolproof method because, first of all, you can stick into a calculator and it'll solve it. And second of all, the geometric version will vary if we have like an endpoint down here and we have to create two different triangles and it just gets a little bit messy. So I hope my explanation helped and I'll uh, see you again next time. Make sure you, um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get a few more subscribers here and there. And um, yeah, if I can help you with any problems, be sure to send them to me.